The US military is now facing a new threat and it could compromise its ability to defend our country long term. It's not North Korea, it is actually the US diet. Oh, I thought so, I thought when you said that the US military has a new threat, it's like, oh, people are gonna start thinking rationally, is that the threat? <laughs> yeah. Is that the, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, people might think rationally about what our budget should be like, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, no, we haven't reached that yet, but there is this threat. And so a study was conducted uh, into the ability to recruit physically able uh, Americans to serve in the military. And researchers found that it is a problem and it's because of obesity. Researchers found the issue is particularly evident in 11 southern states, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas, where recruits were found to be, quote, significantly less fit and or more likely to become injured than recruits from other US states. A study concluded that these 11 states are disproportionately burdensome for military readiness and national security <laughs> for two reasons. <laughs> First, high obesity rates mean the candidate pool for the military is dwindling. Huh. Second, individuals with poor physical training levels prior to being recruited have an increased risk for injury during a basic combat training. And that is financially consequential because if you do train someone and because of their prior lack of physical fitness, they become injured, that apparently costs the Department of Defense roughly $31,000. That was back in 2005. Probably a little bit higher now. And so overall, outside of the South, what does this actually look like if you're trying to recruit for the military? There are 33.4 million Americans between 17 and 24, which is historically the military's prime demographic for recruitment, but less than 30% of them are actually qualified <laughs> due to an array of disqualifying <laughs> factors, including poor physical fitness and obesity. And so they're still hitting their, their goals. Like they say, we want X number, they're getting them. But the reason is it's related to this actually, if you bring this up, over 8,000 recruits received waivers for obesity and related issues <laughs> in 2017, Christ. up from 6,700 in 2016. So this is a rapidly rising thing. As with all obesity related statistics, it is getting bigger fast. Wow. Wow, I know how, and that's gotta drive Trump crazy because I know he was so weight conscious with his beauty contestants. He was. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. he was crazy. He was criticizing that one woman, I forgot her name, but. Yeah. Yeah, and look, I mean, how this actually affects the military, I don't, I don't Who cares? especially care about that. Mm -hmm. But what I do care about is us, I've talked about this recently, I was telling you before the show, like we can't tell what is threatening us. We think it's terrorism or we think it's God only knows what. But it's not, it's normal stuff, it's texting while driving. It is what we stuff in our face holes. That's what's going to kill us. It's killing us right now, slowly. Many of these people who don't qualify to join the military will end up dying for a host of metabolic related issues like heart disease and cardiovascular disease, all sorts of diabetes and related issues. And that is, that's only getting worse year by year. And occasionally we have a little bit of a conversation, but not for very long and it is killing us as a country. Well, and, and I think, I, I agree with you, our, our food culture is incredibly problematic. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with access. I mean, I mean the fact that we have food deserts in a yes. country as rich as the United States. Thank you. Is, is absolutely What is a food insane. desert, Ron? A food desert is, is where like, and, and I don't know the specific way they designate it, but there is only so much food available within a radius. So it's like when you have a lack of grocery yeah. stores in your area. Particularly and a lot fresh of food and stuff fresh produce, it tends to be produce. convenience stores, fast food, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and a lot of these people, they're very poor, they might not have a car. You know, I, I mean, I, there was a report I saw a couple years ago, there, there was this guy, he had a family of three, he had no car, he would do, you know, four hours round trip to get produce for the week. And, it, yeah. and he's not able, you know, some of it went bad when he got home and, and, and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, this is something, that happens in the United States, and and this is something that you know we're not, you know, it's easier to get food that's not as healthy. So a lot of these yes. people, like they're they're eating yeah. stuff that yeah, it's Fast not food good for them, but it's because that's all they can afford. For them, this isn't right. like a special yeah. treat. This is all they can afford, and it's just like the way we go about our food culture is just completely backwards. And I mean, some of the laws we have are you know not even legal in other countries. And this has come from a guy that does love the occasional processed macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I know it's a street, but I do love it. So I'm not- And not you know, technically food, it, but it's yeah, enjoyable. Exactly, but it is enjoyable. Yeah, as Michael Pollan says, we mostly eat edible food-like substances in this right. country. And uh, th this is, this is in, to some extent, a government thing. I mean, how much information we get, the government puts out food guides and stuff like that. And it tends to be based off of long discredited information and leads us to eating stuff that again, increases the chance of these things killing us. Uh, what do we subsidize in this country in terms of government dollars? We subsidize corn and what do they make out of it? High fructose corn syrup for the most part. We could be subsidizing vegetables and things like that. 
Um, and to some extent we do occasionally, but generally corn uh, is the thing. And then specific policies, and this is something I remember when it was announced back um, under, in the Obama administration. I had rarely been as excited about a piece of uh, government regulation as they were finally going to add to nutrition labels added sugars, which I think is one of the single most important things that causes people to not understand how unhealthy a lot of food is because added sugars are put into almost everything in the supermarket now. And they finally said they're gonna do that and there's a period where they need to phase it in. And in the first year of Donald Trump, he said that he is going to be rescinding that. I don't know the current state, maybe they backed off of that as they have many things, but we need to know what we're eating. Like a lot of people don't know how bad some of this stuff is, and they can't get the information because the government is allowing companies to hide it from them. If you want to get the whole Young Turks show every single day, become a member, tytnetwork.com slash join. And once you do, you'll be saying, You know, I'm like a smart person. Or you might say, I think it's weird. Or you might say, Oops. No, that won't be that one. It won't be that one. It'll be great, trust me. tytnetwork.com slash join.